radio is like talk radio. People say things sometimes that are foolish. We're talking about the Yi situation. Uh, it was very, very uh, foolish, very unfortunate. And, uh, you know, it's a nightmare for the radio station when something like that happens because it's uh, it's so politically incorrect that it goes beyond the boundaries of what um, talk radio or sports talk radio flirts with. They flirt with the boundaries of political incorrectness. But if you just go over the edge and you do something that is blatantly racist in an effort to be funny, uh, what can you do? I mean, it's it's just an embarrassment. And um from what I understand, uh, they've suspended Fourier, and uh, he was very contrite about it. It's just one of those things that happens. He said he thought he was being funny. You know, sometimes when you're in that situation and you're grabbing for something to be provocative or to be funny or, 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 or just to be entertaining, you make the wrong decision. I don't want to say the guy is not a seasoned broadcaster. He comes from football. A lot of great broadcasters come from football. Sure. Um, it's, you know, I, I, I feel sorry for him, uh, and especially since he's apologized. It, it happens. Uh, it's just happened uh, at a time right now where there's a whole bunch of things happening. So suddenly it looks like there's chaos in, uh, in Boston sports uh, well, and media. Well, earlier in the week, Ben Volan, who's a big star sports reporter at the Boston Globe, uh, called out WEEI and claimed that they had tried to set him up with a false story. Uh, similar to uh, Ron Borges was caught uh, misrepresenting uh, a story and has subsequently been suspended and may be fired. Uh, is, is sports radio so concerned about keeping ratings, driving re ratings, that they're really you know, either on the fringe or over the fringe in some of this stuff? Great question. And, and what I have found, because uh, I, I know radio talk show hosts very well all across the country. I know them personally. Uh, I uh, mentor a lot of them. Uh, they tell me their stories. They tell me their issues. And I have found that there is a huge difference, not everybody, but just generally speaking, between sports talk show hosts and sports talk radio and other kinds of talk radio, news talk radio, or any kind of radio at all. Sure. It is highly competitive. Yeah. And the sports talkers, uh, they, they, they kind of think they're jocks. They, mm. they engage in a, in a much more brutal form of trash talk. Uh, they they talk about kicking each other's ass and 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 beating their each other in the ratings on, on a level that the, the, the there's not the same type of camaraderie among them that exists between competitors in other kinds of radio. Yeah. So it's it, it really is a blood sport, and a lot of them take it, my opinion, way too seriously. Uh, one of the things that, that um, I enjoy is when broadcasters who are in competition with each other get together. Uh, and there's nobody around, they tend to be, there's a, a brotherhood and a sisterhood that does not exist for the most part in sports talk radio. It's a different culture. L let me ask you a question. Every year you rank the top 100 people in talk radio, your talkers 100. How many of those are sports people? We have, we, it used to be that there were a small percentage of them were sports people, but as sports talk radio became bigger and bigger, for the last three or four years, we have a separate heavy hundred for sports talk radio. It's the biggest sub genre of news talk radio or talk radio. Right. So um, we have we have a heavy hundred just for sports talkers now, and, uh, and 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 I know how they respond when somebody they don't like or a competitor is ranked above them. Whereas the news talkers are uh, they're a little bit more casual about it. They go, well, maybe next year or why him. They get violent. <laughs> I mean, they, they, they're they're scary. Uh, you, it's, you dealing with New, sports talk radio is a whole different animal. You live in New Hampshire, is that correct? Are you in New Hampshire? I live in Massachusetts. Oh, you're in Massachusetts. Do uh, they drive the, to your home and threaten now, you? Right now, at, at the at the moment, at the moment, I'm in Florida. Oh, good for you. Well done. Um, yeah, you're in the in the better, smarter place. Uh, let me just well, go. A warmer place. Let me just hit on um, iHeart. Obviously. Cumulus, uh, the third largest radio group in the country, is now in bankruptcy proceedings in Chapter 11, I believe. And iHeart, the largest radio group in the country, um, missed a debt payment and seems to be an indication that they are looking for 
uh, either a new rhythm to renegotiating their debt or looking for a bankruptcy. What, what do you hear on this subject? Well, uh, they are uh, heading down what it seems to be the same track that Cumulus went down. First, if you remember, uh, Cumulus purposefully uh, missed a payment. Then it goes into, I believe, a 30-day grace period. And then uh, the you-know-what hits the fan. Right. Uh, and uh, we're waiting for that to happen. According to the uh, Wall Street Journal, a bankruptcy could come as quickly as March. Yeah. Uh, I personally try to stay out of making predictions when I don't have a crystal ball. Uh, nobody knows for sure. This is very uncharted territory in the radio business for one there to be such giant companies and for them to be in so much trouble financially. You know the old saying, too big to fail. Right. The, entire, the entire institution of American radio is hanging in the balance. Right. I mean, this, this, so, so it's not just an industry that doesn't have all types of emotional and social consequences attached to it. These radio stations have got to continue to exist. Radio is a very important part of the fabric of American society. So it is, a bit more special than if it were a different type of industry that made widgets or any number of manufactured products. Uh, therefore, it's very dangerous to speculate. Uh, but we have the cumulus model to look at. And uh, there's tremendous amount of conflict between the creditors and the people who are managing um, iHeart at this time as to who will be in control after um, this 30-day period passes and there is either a bankruptcy or not, or some other type of reorganization. Um, your guess is as good as mine. And of course, iHeart is run by Bob Pittman, uh, who made fame and fortune with MTV and really building that franchise uh, to being one of the most important cable networks uh, back in the 90s and early 2000s. Um, uh, <laughs> is there a chance, you know, uh, Cumulus's uh, a legacy had a bankruptcy nine years ago uh, when it was Citadel. Are we now in a cycle that these mega operations just because of their debt, because of the, their sizes, that they're just not viable entities? And uh, iHeart's got 20 something billion dollars in debt. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a shame too because, well, first of all, uh, they're terribly unwieldy. Uh, it's very hard to run a company of that size. Uh, they were acquired uh, after deregulation when companies were able to consolidate. Uh, it was a very, very different time. It was pre-2008. It was pre the, the collapse. It was pre the real heavy duty entering into the digital age where there are so many competitors, exotic competition for radio. Uh, it was just a whole different mindset, and an enormous amount of money was paid for these radio stations based on it being an asset uh, it, prior to 2008 in the run-up to consolidation. Now they're stuck with all of these radio stations and uh, a, a debt that is smothering. I, I mean, yeah. the best word I could use is smothering. However, it should be pointed out that radio itself, if you take away that part of the story, that they paid too much for the stations. Right. And you keep in mind the fact that radio is an important part of the fabric of our society. Radio itself is a very viable business. It has a lot of listeners. People still listen to the radio. It still is important. And if you take away the red ink factor of the debt payments, which are stifling and smothering the business, they can make money if they were back in a reset situation operating according to the laws of nature. And right. that's the key, is how do you get all these radio stations back to being uh, with a debt service that's reasonable, as opposed to the one right now with debt to profit crushing, they can just make? Just crushing, yeah. Michael, I yeah, want to thank you so survive. much. Um, we're probably going to have you back in, a, in a, uh, four, four to 12 weeks, somewhere in that uh, period of time, ask you to come back and talk about some of this. I always appreciate it. You and have a wealth of knowledge. And uh, enjoy the, the warmer weather down in Florida. Enjoy, thank you very much. And I, I really am a fan of your, of your platform and I consider it an honor and a privilege to be part of it. Thanks for having me on, Josh. Thanks so much. Uh, we'll be right back. We're going to be with Mr. Innovation, Saul Kaplan. We have a lot to talk about. Uber, Amazon, you name it. We're going to talk about.